We're interrupting this program in order to begin our regularly scheduled broadcast. Thanks for watching the Lit TV Network. All right. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Of course, I am your host, Kim Warner, and I have Nicole Miller. And of course, Ashley is always with me. She's such a great help to me. Nikki, how are you doing today? I call her Nikki. I'm doing well. How are you doing today? It's good. It's good. I am good. And it's good to have you here with us to share your knowledge. Tell them a little bit about your your business. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to share this space with you um, today. Um, I am Reverend Nicole Miller. I have a mindset practitioner business where I create space for individuals to pause, hear their breath, and create space to hear the, to hear the answers that are that lie within. You know, I am a um, practitioner of A Course in Miracles. And so with that, I believe that all answers are fine, found when we still ourselves and we allow spirit to guide us. When we let spirit, Holy Spirit, who is our true teacher and our true guide, answer the calling and the desires of our heart. Because everything we desire, solutions are within. Everything that we desire, those paths, that those roles that we need to take, the, the the conductor, if you will, is that light, is that inner light, the light that we are within. So it's basically cultivating time and space to strengthen that and to get clarity as we move on this path. All right. Wonderful. We need that. And we're in the heart energy as we speak right now. Ashley, tell them about your business. My business is Business Grace LLC. I do um, startup foundational business coaching. Um, you can find my website, which is www.businessgracellc.com. Right now it's a blog. So you're blogging with me through my journey as I discovered Business Grace being my passion. So please take that journey with me. And if you need me, you can contact me through my website or at my email address, which I'll provide at the end to help you with all your business coaching and consulting needs. Wonderful, wonderful. And I'm glad to have you ladies with me again, the Cancer Club. So today we're gonna to be discussing the heart chakra. Now, throughout the last couple of weeks, we've been on uh, the solar plexus, which we have definitely connected with um, the temple over in Revelations 21, um, letting us all see that stones are in the Bible, uh, debunking that um, theory that stones are witchcraft. Most of the information we've read before or heard before, but we just didn't hear it through the ears of the spirit or the voice of the spirit. So here we are going to look at the heart chakra today. And also we'll present um, there is a book that we had been writing on, Ashley, myself, and my daughter-in-law, Maite. Uh, you guys will be welcome to purchase it. Uh, you'll get the information on it. It will be a download uh, and moving forward. So today in the heart chakra, we can feel the expansion of the heart chakra. But the thing is, is that most people are running from it. As Nicole said, to pause. Pausing means that I start to identify with myself. You know, the uh, I love Socrates and Aristotle. When I was a young girl, I heard this phrase, know thyself, and had no idea that I would be leading myself into knowing myself and others as well. And so to know thyself is to get into the heart, to sit in the heart, as Nicole spoke of pausing. And one of the scriptures as I was writing up, just the format, because I like to give us information on where we're going, even though the spirit is moving here. I could feel that we're, we're pulling at it. There's so much um, energy that's needed out there to be receptive to that you are loved and that you are supported. But then I begin to look at as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so if I think that I am not, then I shall not be. But if I think that I shall be, then so it is. And so as a man or a woman thinketh in his heart, so is he. What are we thinking in our heart? 
what is it that we need to pluck up and pull out? We talked about um, the rose bush last week, things that we need to get to the root of, not on a superficial level, but going deep down into the subconscious level to pull up the doubt, the worry, the anger, the hurt. The hurt doesn't have to stay there. Um, I had a call from someone and they were saying that they just felt stuck. We feel stuck because we're on pause. I'm going to bring the cold in. We're on pause to evaluate where we need to go, uh, to change the familiar patterns, to change the familiar ideas. And guess what? Some of that familiarity that is in us has to do with how we were environmentally um, cultivated. All right, Nicole. Yes. So, you know, you spoke to the subconscious mind and a lot of times when we pause, it's looking at not the conversation that we're having out loud necessarily with that internal conversation that the, that that is our soul's voice. You know, our soul resides in the heart. So when we take a moment to one, listen to what it is that we're feeling. What it is that our heart is that our heart is saying or our soul is trying to express to us and that conversation that has or is the cause of the reality that we see the course says nothing real can be broken nothing unreal exists here and lies the, the peace of god speaking to this illusion that we create when our thoughts are separated the illusion of lack limitation separation because when we sit in the truth of who we are and we rest in our heart chakra we then affirm and and rest in this the, the truth of we are the light we are spirit and that this body is temporary right and therefore when we rest in that heart chakra we begin healing those thoughts of separation we shine brighter and this this body that we have then goes forth and, and continues to expand in love Expanding the will of God. Amen. Expanding wow. in God. Yeah, Ashley. So it, even when I read the, the format that you sent over regarding this, Ms. Kim, the first thing that I thought about is after our few, first few sessions, you sent me a heart chakra meditation about opening up my heart. And um, mm -hmm. I was a person that believed I have a big heart. I'm always open to things. And I realized in sitting in that meditation after I did it, maybe two or three days, my heart had not been open. I had not healed anything within myself. I had never, as Nicole pointed out, paused and really listened to my inner my inner voice, hearing myself and hearing the hurt and hearing the things that I needed to work through. So as I kept doing the meditation, and it's a meditation I've saved and I go back to when I'm not sure that I've been connecting with myself, that I feel the expansion. I even right now sitting here can feel the expansion of my heart opening up just because of things that I've experienced in the past couple of weeks and knowing, okay, I need to sit back with myself and hear my voice, not hear the voice of what someone's telling me, not yeah. hear the ideas that other people are planting in me and that I need to I need to walk in what they're telling me I need to do. I need to connect with myself and connect with source to know, okay, I need a moment here and I might need to feel my feelings. I might need to cry. I might need to write. One of the things that I forgot is a real serious way that I connect with spirit for myself is through automatic writing. Yeah. So I've been sitting with that and journaling and, and paying attention to that even a little bit more and also introducing it to my daughter so that she can connect with that part of herself. So it's been, this, this moment right now for me is so on point and it came on time that I needed to refocus on this energy because I've been ignoring it. And you don't realize it because you're going through the hustle and bustle of the day. You're on social media posting what everybody else posting. You're focused on what the news is saying, what shows you're watching, what your friends are dumping on you. Because let's be honest, sometimes our friends only call to dump on us. And you don't mm -hmm. have that moment where you just silence everything and you go, what am I saying? What am I dealing with? What am I experiencing? And what does my heart 
need. I, I, so, I, I, I thank you. I, yeah, I, I think that you bring up some good um, points and information to heart. Um, I, in my study, um, it's going to be different. What I found is getting back to the basics of the covenant agreement is where um, if anyone asks, your, um, your change begins because um, innately what happens is, is that we're guided by a fellowship of individuals, which means that we uh, miss the mark in some cases of uh, the individual. And when you were speaking, I heard martyr. Um, I'm here as the courageous one to turn the martyrdom around, that we do not have to be saviors for others. If we were called to be a savior for ourselves, and it's right there in Deuteronomy 5, because Moses met with God on the mount. He didn't meet with everybody on the mount. He had to go up to talk to God, which was the individual relationship. So we have to see for ourselves that we are not gods to others. We are first embracing the presence of God. And I like to talk about the God and the goddess because, you know, there's so much there that is missing and why women and men um, cannot relate with their own feminine energy. I don't want to get too far, but in order to get beyond martyrdom and you being a savior, you have to get balanced. And it's a wonderful thing to bring this into perspective. I didn't look at all of it, but in this season, because I educate my people on the moon, the lunar calendar, as well as the solar. There's a lot of things that people don't understand. We have a solar calendar because it's indicative of the, the masculine energy, but the lunar calendar is indicative of the female. Now, moving on from there, what does that mean? As we were talking, some of us spoke about our moon sign and our moon sign it's the heart of who we are. Little do we know, because what is hidden in the moon, I love it. What's hidden in the moon, in the womb, is where our empowerment is. So when we look at the heart chakra, even as we begin to discuss it, I'm sure that you know people will say, well, what about the heart? The heart is who we are. When I meet with who I am in the womb, there's a cultivation of a new individual that's coming up, because that's Oh, that's, I'm sorry, unfamiliar information that I had never discovered about myself. I may have been moving in time with what my family said. Little did I know, like Moses, I was going to get another out view of life or preview of life. I'm going to let you guys go into that. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so when we look at you, so Kim, Kim, what you're saying is that how we get a new perspective when we go inward and we release the need to basically be saviors to all, right? Yes. Yes. I, oh, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, you know, when we look at the, when you mentioned the womb, so I like to think, uh, especially us as women, that we have two wounds, right? And one of our wounds is our mind. You know, the ideas and the thoughts that are implanted in our mind, those internal conversation that starts within our mind, um, the receptors, uh, and where we either choose to listen once again, like I said, to the to spirit as our guide or to our separated self, our ego and or the shadow. Some people call it the shadow, right? Yes. So when we, when we look at what thoughts are being planted and what, what it is that we're allowing ourselves to think as we move forward. So Rumi has a poem and the question is asked, how many times must my heart break, right? And when we think about heartbreak, it sometimes comes from relationship with someone, right? And when we look at that relationship with someone and that heartbreak, there's emotions tied to it. A lot of, sometimes, it's feelings of game and, sh um, not game, I'm sorry, blame, guilt, and shame. That mm -hmm. game is being played as always outward, outward, outward. However, when we listen to our, when we allow our heart to break, so Rumi says, how many times must, must our heart break? The answer comes from spirit, and the answer is as many times as it, as it takes to let me in. 
Mm. So that goes towards our experiences in a repeat in these relationships where we try to save everyone outside of ourselves instead of listening to ourselves on the inside, realizing that that forgiveness starts first within. Healing starts first within. So when we take all that energy that we're, wait, wait, let's stop, pause, redirect yeah. that energy back to self, back inward to begin healing self, to look at our thoughts of separation, looking at why we maybe made that relationship bigger than our source. We made that relationship our answer. And it's a relationship with everyone, yeah. including a relationship with our separated self. Yes. So, so how would you, Nicole, describe being separated? Because this is information that many people don't understand. When we've been to um, religious practices, and that's where I was going with some of the information, Deuteronomy 5 is where um, uh, Moses was separated from an old life. Uh, he had to go through a process in the desert, literally experiencing um, what people feel as a drought, it's hopelessness, uh, it's desperation, needing water, but it's not water per se, it's the water of life, it's the bread of life, yes? Yeah? So how would you explain separation to the people so that they can understand if they need to get on another path? Because some people need that path, uh, elevation. Excuse me. Yes. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The way I would describe separation would be any thoughts in which you believe that God or spirit is outside of you, where you have to mm -hmm. look to someone else mm -hmm. to hear and or see your God or your source or whatever or your higher being. The belief this the idea of separation is the belief that at any time God or your source leaves your side. Because that's not reality. The truth is, I remember uh, my first, I would say, my, my, in all honesty, my first major heart, heartbreak was transition, right? That's mm -hmm. the first time that I, that I, that, that my heart broke open. I, I knew my source. I knew who the breath of life, how it flowed through me, the source of it, et cetera. However, there was a feeling of hopelessness, although I was filled with all the faith. And, that, and then after I discovered that, after I worked through the grieving process, I realized that in some aspects, I replaced my relationship with my true source with this relationship. Right. And there was guilt around that because what we spoke about, I, I attempted to save this person. And there was no, this was natural transition. There was no way to save. However, because of the role in some aspects that I placed on the, within this individual, right? I had to go through that 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 desert season within my soul, that desert mm -hmm. separate, that season of feeling lost, that season of wandering, that season of thirst. You know, if that makes sense. So that's what I mean by separation. At any point in time, um, making something outside of yourself the answer to source. Great. All right. That touched on a couple of things that even I didn't realize. Um, when my father transitioned, um, I didn't equate it with a heartbreak, but it is because I'm daddy's little girl. I will still say I am. And um, instead of leaning on God, I kind of pushed all my feelings down got completely distracted, distracted with working, with being a somewhat still new mother, um, being a daughter to my mother, a support system to my sisters, that I wasn't connecting. I closed myself off completely. And that carried on for me for five years, which I didn't even have the consciousness at the time, the awareness at the time to realize I had become a martyr. Mm -hmm. I was a martyr for everybody else, but not for myself. And then now that I'm getting more comfortable with unboxing that because I came out of my depression, recognized the situation and slowly started to unpack it. But realizing even recently in a session with Ms. Kim that I haven't fully dealt with understanding how I process loss. And 
that it's not a, it's a physical loss, but it's not a spiritual loss because there are teachings, there are things implanted in me from these individuals and that they're never really gone. And that was something that I had, had to understand that they've returned home, but it doesn't mean that they're so far removed from me. So in coming into that understanding, it's been essentially like a mourning process all over again for me of understanding that and mourning the part of me that I was holding on to, the part of me that no longer could be here because I had grown, I had evolved and I had been changing. But it was so much so like, but no, I can't let go. That's that's a part of me, but no, that's not who I am. And that's not who God, God is dictates who I am. They dictate that I am stronger in them, that if I'm walking in my faith and, and relying on them and surrendering the part of me that feels like I have to save others, that I am then saving myself, who you can't save somebody else if you're not saving yourself. You can't be there for anyone if you're not connected within yourself. So and this was only within maybe the last month and a half that I've really come into that realization that, okay, you're going to have to journey back into that and, and understand that because then I'm still not even who I am if I haven't healed that, if I haven't rectified that, because I still, part of me is still staying in that place and I can't progress forward. And I think a lot of people don't understand that where they go, oh, I spent the time alone. I understand that. I got it. Despite what anybody else thinks, I've, I've, I've dealt with that. Have you really dealt with it if when you're triggered by it, it causes such an uproar? And that's what happened with me. I was triggered by the fear that my grandmother was going to transition. And I said, well, wait a minute. Not my grandmother. It, it's not her time. She can't be taken away from me. She's not being taken away from you. Mm -hmm. And I had to understand that and understand that even that idea started many, many years ago because my father fought mm -hmm. cancer for 17 years. Mm -hmm. So I had to go back and there's been some ugly crying happening, but it's been um, refreshing because I'm not saying why God, why? I'm saying... I understand and I surrender that this is a part of life, but it doesn't mean it's the end. So it's been, um, it's been interesting, so to speak. And I think when you get past that, you look at yourself with new eyes and you're able to look at other people with new eyes because now your heart is more open to recognizing what someone else is walking through. And you don't you don't hold against them what they hold against them what they say to you because we're all dealing with something. And once you make that connection back to yourself and back to, to spirit and God, you are operating in unconditional love. So you don't you don't penalize someone for their insensitive words that you may interpret for their their limited focus. You're more so like, I love you because of it in a different manner. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you for um, taking up this space. But yeah, when you lose something or someone, it's snatched away without any questions or even being asked, there's a level of forgiveness that you have to go into the heart and sit with. Mm -hmm. um, you guys, uh, Nikki, you want to give some information to that and then let them know where they can email you for your um, business or your website. Yes, I. Um, when it comes to digging into the heart with um, grief and the unlocking, I would say, especially for African-American women, look at the emotion because the heart is emotion. And, uh, and the emotion allows us to know what the soul is, is attempting to communicate, right? Be comfortable with the anger and the rage that comes up. It is yeah. natural. You know, we, I've, I've heard Ashley speak so eloquently, so beautifully on emotion and recognizing that and accepting that it is all good because it's our barometer to mm -hmm. gauge where we are and maybe Hello. what we're feeling 
and, and, and where our thoughts are resting. So if I can just, you know, say anything, it is to embrace all emotion, the joy, the peace, the love, you know, that lets us know we are in alignment, that we are, you know, on that path and we're great. And also the anger and the rage that what also lets us know we are on the right path and we are in a space of healing. Right. Yeah. It may be it may be that pause that we need to hear ourselves and heal, but it doesn't mean that we're wrong. No, we are still right. It is okay, and we are healing. Spirit is in the midst. Spirit doesn't leave our side. God is always present. We are always in alignment. Our will is always the truth of who we are, that light, that soul, our souls. So allow yourself to feel it all and rest in it all. Beautiful. Somebody. Beautiful. Add your, give them your email address so they'll know where to contact you. Um, they can contact me at Nicole S. Mill at gmail.com. That's N I C H O L E S is in Sam M I L L at gmail.com. Um, from there, the invitations will go out. I am doing a launch in May. An Wonderful. Yay! <laughs> Celebrating you. <laughs> yes, thank you. So, because um, this has been in the works since 2019. So, I'm it's excited. Ashley? your information? You can reach me on my website at www.businessgracellc.com. And you can also email me at atownsend714 at gmail.com for any of your business coaching and consulting needs, but also just to share with me. I love to understand your story and hear your walk yeah. and understand your information because we're all here helping each other grow, evolve, and change. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Ashley, for coming on and sharing. Um, we'll see you again. Uh, thank you guys for viewing. Until next week, blessings. Yada, yada. Yada, yada.